Okay, Job chapter 15. Job has been speaking chapter 13, 14, and pretty much Job has told him to shut up. I've had enough. You're quacks. You don't know what you're saying. And after that, after Job finishes, <clears throat> chapter 15, Eliphaz is going to speak up. And when you read chapter 15 of Eli Eliphaz, you got to read it with an attitude with anger. Broken pride. You got to read it as, who do you think you are, Job? How dare you? Now, I'm not going to read, read it in anger, but if you're going to read the Bible in context, this would be anger. Insulted. <clears throat> then answered Eliphaz the Temanite and said, Should a wise man utter vain knowledge? You've been calling us vain. You've been calling us empty head. You've been calling them no value. We're wise. Are we not full of vain words? And fill his belly with the east wind. Calling us a bunch of hot air. We're wise. This is not us. We got intelligible words. Now remember, these three men of Job, they do speak what is right, but not against Job. You can find some doctrine in the discourse of these men, but not for Job. Should he reason with unprofitable talk? That's what Job accused him of. Listen, you're a quack. You said nothing. Well, should we have any reason because you say we didn't say nothing? And with speeches wherewith he can do no good. He, he's directing at Job and nobody but Job. So there's anger, there's attitude, verse 4, yea, thou castest off fear. That cast is the first time that word shows up. Remember, Job's already admitted he's a sinner. He's, he's in iniquity. He has fear. What has come upon him has been his fear. He's admitted it. So now, Elisha, eh, you said, you know, what fear you would come off. It's, it's happened. How about, let's look at your fears, Job, and see what God can do. And watch this. And restraineth prayer before God. Remember what Job said earlier? I speak to God, but you answered me. Job has been speaking to God. Job has been praying to God. Eliphaz said, you, you know, you stop your prayers to God. No. No, you didn't. If you guys shut up, he would be praying more to God. For thy mouth, Job's mouth, for thy mouth uttereth thine iniquity. You're full of sin. You're full of sin, Job. Not us, you. And thou chose this. That's the first time that shows up. Thy tongue of the crafty. You get a crafty tongue. And you're full of iniquity. That's why you're in the position you are. That's why we're sitting over here. Well, well, have no problems. And you're over there. You lost everything. Your, your children are dead. Your wife is screaming at you. You got those bullets. And you're miserable. Look at what we're doing. Guys, out like rude. Thy Job own mouth condemneth. That's the first time that shows up. Condemneth it. Everything you said, Job, proves you to be wrong. Everything I read of Job proves to be right. <laughs> Everything you guys are saying. And not I, yea, thy Job's own lips testify against thee. God's going to answer to you, Lord, uh, Job, by what your mouth. And you're going to find yourself guilty. Me? No. I'm trying to read it as a snotty attitude. So if you're picking up that snottiness, that's what I'm trying to do. Because a snotty rebuke against me, calling us quacks, I've got a degree in the bathroom up hanging on the wall. And just because you got a degree from some college doesn't mean nothing. Because sometimes degrees are handed out as called an honorary degree, and you didn't earn it. Matter of fact, I call that an insult to people who spent the money, effort, and time to get such a degree. 
I can name you two doctors right now. They got degrees. I, I've seen their diploma, and I can call them a quack. But Joe called Ellie Pass. Art thou, Joe, the first man that was born? No. Cain or Abel was. Well, what, what's the point in that one? Or was thou made before the hills? I mean, Joe, who do you think you are? You think you're so aged, you've been around since Adam and Eve. You've been around since God made this earth. You're so smart. Because remember, Job said earlier, with me are the aged and gray-headed. Now he's attacking Job's word about the age. Hast thou heard the secret of God? And dost thou restrain wisdom to thyself? I mean, can you answer any of the questions and all the questions God has? And no, what knowest thou, Job, that we know not? Oh, come on, Job, you're smarter than we are. What understandest thou, Job, which is not in us. Come on, you're calling us a quack? Show us more than what you know of all three of us. You know what these three guys are? I see no evil, I hear no evil, and I, I, I touch you, or every other third monkey is. That's a seed here, and, and whatever the other one is. That's what they are. Verse 10. With us, us, all together, are both gray-headed, so they're old. And very aged men. Now there's four all together, including Joe. I don't know when the fifth one co uh, the fifth one comes up. He shows up later. Much elder than thy father. So there are men older than Joe's father would have been. Let's look at let's look at an answer, chapter thirty two, verse nine. We'll jump ahead. And we'll get word from the from the last man he's not mentioned yet. Chapter 32, verse 9. And if he's there, I think he's taking notes. And this is Elihu. And 32 2 to recognize who the gentleman is. Then was the kindred the wrath of Elihu. Against Job was his wrath kindred. Because he justified himself rather than God. All right, the, all right, we see there's a sin. Job is self righteous. All right. And I gotta find where we're supposed to go. Chapter 32, verse 9. Watch what Elihu, Elihu says, right. Great men are not always wise, neither do the aged understand judgment. That's Elihu's answer to what Eliphaz just said. Are you an old man? That don't mean nothing. You know, you could be an old, lost man. I could tell you why you're living so so old. Why? Long-suffering God. God does not want you to die and go to hell. That's why you're living in old age. But old age doesn't mean nothing. There are plenty of dumb old men today. Don't know nothing. Can't do nothing. So there's the attack on, you know, and so Eliphaz said, look at, we're old, we got skill, we got the gray hair. You could have died it. Verse 11. And the consolations, that's the first time that word shows up. I'm trying to find my note where that is. The comfort of refreshment. The consolations of God small with thee, Job. Is there any secret thing with thee? I mean, everything that, I mean, is God treating you the little, the tiniest way? I mean, what secrets do you know, Job? Why does thy Job's heart carry thee away? You're, you're going away from us. You get lofty. What do thy eyes wink at? 
You know what you do when you wink, right? You know, you're up to something. You know, when you're, you're talking to somebody, it's about somebody who just came in the room. You know, that person over there, you know. Man, he's put Job into crafty and just being slick. Of no intelligence. You don't know nothing, Job. I do. And my buddy. That thou, Job, turnest thy spirit against God. Well, yeah, he's got that sin of self-righteousness, but he... All right, he's been blaming God, but have we not all blamed God for troubles? And Job, like us, we don't know. And let us, that's the first time that word shows up, let us, let us, test. such words go out of thy mouth. Hey, buddy, practice what you preach. Because you let some words out already, just this chapter alone. Never mind what you said before. What is man, and this question has been asked before, man has born but woman a few days is full of trouble, Job said 14. So what is man, answering him, that he should be clean? Come on, Job, what are you? What's the fact that you should be so clean, Job? You should be perfect. Who do you think you are? And he that is born of a woman, chapter 14, verse 1, that he should be righteous. Again, just who do you think you are, Job? I mean, he's trying to say that Job wants to be pure, he wants to be clean, he wants to be righteous, he wants to be 100%. He wants to be everything good without problems. Yeah, we all do want that. And we deal with life when situation comes. Behold, he, God, put up no trust in his saints. True. No saints are living people, they're not dead. You wouldn't put trust in a dead person. You put trust in living. But God doesn't put trust in them. Well, God put trust in the ones that written in the Bible. God put trust in the, in the prophets. I want you to go tell these people. I want you to go tell that person. I want you to go up to that king. I want you to go up to David and say, Thou art the man. Now, you can't trust this 100% because even my own self, I'm a saint. I want you to go give that guy a gospel track. Uh, sorry, Lord. I can't be trusted. That's a kind of half truth. Look at the trust he put John the Baptist in. Yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight. That's 100% true. Why? There's principalities and the devil up there. How much more abominable and filthy, that's the first that word, time that word shows up, is man. Now remember, who's he talking to? He's talking to Job. The characteristics of this talk goes to Job. Job, you're abominable. Which drinketh iniquity like water. Job, have a good glass of iniquity you are. And this all comes from chapter 14, verse 1, when man is born of a woman a few days and full of trouble. I'll, I'll tell you what jo trouble is, Job. I'll tell you what it is for you. I, I, Eliphaz, will show thee, Job, hear me, and that which I have seen, I will declare. Call me a quack. Look at what you are, Job. Look at the condition you are. And there are Christians out there who, who if somebody suffering, they will come in your face and they will insult you. They will put you down. I'm the best. You do it my way. I'm the one. 2019. Which wise men have told from their fathers? See, now, now, you just see that? I will tell you. I have seen it. I'll declare it to you. Wise men. Guess who Eliphaz is linking himself with? Wise men. Uh, can you just say... And let us thy words go out of thy mouth. Uh, excuse me, buddy. You need to shut up. <laughs> Unto whom alone the earth was given. And no stranger passed among it. That was the elite. I am of the elite of the wise men. We have the special power. That's lodges. 
You don't get up to the grand poopa or whatever it is unless you go through the secret and the special doors, the special handshake, and only we of the top organization know not the people who just come through the front door last night. And there'll be people when you're in a public man, they know all about God without reading and studying the Bible and knowing and going to church. But we know that Jesus wouldn't do that, what you're doing. Remember, this is e this is uh, Esau, Edom's grandson. This is the one whose grandpa sold himself out for some beans. You'd be having a bean dinner. And you know it comes from beans. So. Uh, verse 20. The wicked man. Guess who he's talking about. Look at verse, chapter 14. 22. Where we left off. But his flesh upon him shall have pain. That's the first time pain showed up. And his soul within shall mourn. Job's describing a wicked man that goes into hell. Remember that? Remember the first time pain shows up, it's a reference to hell. All right, let's see. Let's see what Eliphaz says with pain. This is the second time pain shows up in the Bible. The wicked man travails with pain. He's talking to Job. He's telling you Job's going to go to hell. You know how they were saying out in the world today, Job, go to hell. <laughs> and suffer. There it is. King James, 1611 Bible. I don't know what modern Bibles will say, but Eliphaz is telling Job go to hell and suffer. After Job just told you a man in hell suffers with pain. So one thing you can say about these men here, they are listening to each other because they quote each other. That's outright. All his days. With pain all his days. Let me ask you a question. Have you, now just think about, have you ever known somebody who's just wicked and vile? I mean, think, think back in your, in your past. Have you ever just met someone who's just so wicked? Has that person been in pain and suffering all his life? Pretty much of them, they don't. There are a lot of wicked people out there who don't go through suffering. But let's read in the context what Job said. The wicked man travails with pain all his days. Wouldn't that describe hell? Don't you suffer torments every day? And the conflict here is hell. And the number of years is hidden to the oppressor. How many years was that rich man in hell? Because not all wicked men suffer every day. A dreadful sound is in his ears. And prosperity, the destroyer, shall come upon him. That destroyer is the name of Polyon. I can't think of uh, the other name in the book of Revelation. The beast that comes out of the pit. He believeth, that's the first time that word shows up, he believeth not that he shall return out of darkness. What does that sound like? Hell. When you get into hell, you know you're not coming out. Isn't that a scary, wicked thought? You're suffering, you're in torment, you're condemned, you know, you know I'm here forever. According to life. See, there's truth in the Eliphaz, but not for Job. And lost my book. Alright, he believed in the darkness, verse 22, and he waited for of the sword. Death, war. He wandereth abroad for bread, he gets no food. Hunger. Trying to find food. Homeless. Say, where is it? The bread, the food. He knoweth that the day of darkness is ready at his hand. Death. Now, hasn't that what Joe's been talking about? I can't wait to die. Oh, if I would have died. Oh, Lord God, get 
kill me now so I can get out of this. Well, listen, Jonah went through that. Elijah, Elijah went through that. I guarantee in other places, the, the apostles would probably have thought that. Paul's like, hey, I'd love to go home to home right now, but it's greater for me to be here with you. <laughs> Trouble. Chapter 14, verse 1. Trouble. I'll tell you what trouble is, Job. Trouble and anger shall make him afraid. That's what Job is. Job says, that which has come upon me is that what I fear. So he's given Job, it's because you're a wicked man. That's why you're in the condition you are. And that's why you have fear. Wow. They shall prevail against him. Everything's going to go against you, Job, or the wicked man. You know, when I talk to a lot of people in a public ministry, they don't fear hell. They don't care about hell. They don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. They don't care about the Bible. They wish you'd go away. They wish you don't come back. We don't. You are upset at us. I don't care. You have no fear? I have no fear. I'll put a bumper sticker on my car. No fear. That rich man had no fear in hell. Except for you go tell my family. They shall prevail against him as a king ready to the battle. You know, he's determined to go to battle. For he stretches out his hand against God. Oh yeah, the wicked man, but he's also been addressing Job. And strengthen himself against the Almighty. True with the wicked man. But it looks like to me, Job, hey, Job says, I'm iniquity. I'm a sinner. Lord God, what can I do? Lord God, tell me what my sins are. That don't sound like he's going against God. That's like, God, come on. I need to know what's going on here until we get this out. Lord, we need to get right because I'm in pain. You caught my attention, God. But Job, you're a wicked man. According to this. He runs upon him, even on his neck, and the thick bosses, that's the first time that word shows up, of his butler. And that's just the garments. Butler is like a belt buckle. Boss is like the, how do you put it together? Because he covers his face with his fatness and maketh collops. That's the only time that word shows up. It's pieces of flesh of fat on his flank. You're high on the hog. You got, you got such, you, you are so well fed that you're fat. Now let me ask you something. If we are looking at Job right now, remember the boils? Would you not think that his face is swollen if it's from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet? If his head, if his face is swollen, do you think it's because he's been eating well or it's because he's in pain and suffering and has a disease? And when you get a boil, not only do you get a little boil, but you get also swelling it. Job had boils. And I believe the Bible says they were painful. So, uh, let me try this. Where is it? Sore boils. If he's relating to Job, and I don't know, with fatness of face, I would think it'd be swelling, not because he's had a good diet. Maybe he did. Job was rich. This is not what he needs to hear when he's down and out. He dwelleth in desolate cities. I don't know about Job. And in houses which no man inhabited. That's the first time that word shows up. I guess we're looking at the wicked man, maybe not Job. Which are ready to become heaps. The houses are going to fall down. They're, they're, they're no more standing. Or not going to be standing. He shall not be rich. Job's not rich any longer. I'm looking at a person. I am taking chapter 15 as a personal attack on Job. If I were to go back to chapter 15 again, I would look at the wicked man. But I, I'm taking this as far as Eliphaz is yelling and rebuking Job. Job is no longer rich. 
All his livestock is dead or gone. Neither shall his substance continue. You mean a livestock? You mean his children? Maybe his wife? He's already said his family's gone and his friends are gone. We'll, we'll read more about them later. Neither shall he prolong the perfection thereof upon you. The perfect Job. How, how holy you are, Job, to call us quacks. You're no more. You're no longer. Just sit there and suffer. Okay, that's how I'm applying chapter 15. You can apply these chapters four ways. I'm going the way of Job right now. He shall not depart out of darkness. That's a man in hell. Why? The flame. The flame. Where do you get a flame in darkness in the Bible? Hell. The Bible don't speak about hell. It speaks plenty about hell. It may not say H-E-L-L. But the Bible also doesn't say R-A-P-T-U-R-E. Nor does the Bible say S-T-U-P-I-D. I do. Now watch this. Ready? They're paying attention. Shall dry up his branches. Do you know what a branch is? Let's look at chapter 14, verse 8. Chapter 14, verse 8. Well, verse 7. There is hope of a tree to be cut. He listened to what Job said. And he's taking what Job has said and he's rebuking Job for what Job said. We studied that the other night. The tree and the resurrection. He's saying, Job, you're that tree. You're going to burn and you're going to burn in darkness and you're not ever going to come out of it. Job says there's light. Job claims to be of God. And he is. He's a sinner. Eliphaz says, you're not of God, you're against God, you're going against God, you're, you turn to the wickedness of God, and you're going to hell. That's what he's telling Job. Keep reading. Branches, verse 30. And by the breath of his mouth, God, of his mouth, shall he go away, death. Once that breath is gone, you're dead. Let not him that is deceived trust in vanity. For vanity shall be his recompense. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sow it, that he shall also reap. We're going back. You call us vanity, Job? Answer me. What I just said. You think that's vanity? It shall be accomplished before his time. And his branch, chapter 14, verse 8, shall not be green. No life to what Job said, life of that tree in verse 14. Talk about Job, trees, I'll give you a tree. The tree I'm talking about is going to die and not ever come back. Job says the tree that gets water, the living water, it will sprout life again. Tell if that's not for you. And study that with, with Psalms chapter 1, with the tree of the righteous planted by the river. And I believe it speaks about the tree of the wicked, no light. Verse 33. He shall shake off his unripe grape as a vine. It's a dead vine. He shall cast off his flower as the olive. A dead tree, dead plant. It had fruit. It had leaves. There was light. And you killed yourself. I believe Jesus took a fig tree and cursed it for not having any fruit on it. But that was a representation of Israel. You know what Job is? 42 chapters. Job is a picture of the Jew in the tribulation period. Being tormented by three. <laughs> in the middle of the book of Job, God shows up in a whirlwind. Job is a picture of the tribulation period. Grape is that picture of the wine of the blood of Jesus. The olive is the tripe of the Holy Spirit, the oil. So you got the Holy Spirit, you got the blood right there of Christ. For the congregation of the hypocrites, that's the first time that shows up, shall be desolate. The subject is Job. Job, you're a hypocrite. Call us a hypocrite? I'm going to call you back a hypocrite. And the fire 
shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. That is the only time that word shows up. Job, you also take bribes. I mean, I remember when I grew up as a kid. Tis not, tis so, tis not, tis so. Well, your mom wears combat boots. <laughs> We were children. <laughs> Only fast ran out of things to say. Oh my God! Oh yeah, the tabernacles. Are, you know, I don't think Job took any bribes. We'll read about that later when Job discusses his character. They conceive mischief and bring forth vanity, and their belly prepareth deceit. That's the first time deceit shows up. He's made. Look at all the charges he's got against Job. You're going to hell. You're wicked. You've gone against God. You're vain. You're deceitful. You're doing bribes. You're just wicked. You're not wise as we are. You're vain. You're just a terrible man. And who do you think you are for calling us quacks? <laughs> I tell you. 